My name is Virginie Glenzer. I'm VP of Marketing, and I've been for the last more than 20 years um, working and converging marketing, tech, and innovation strategies to deliver customer experiences. That's my focus. So today we're going to talk about social selling and really focus on how to create the best social media profile. We're going to be talking about what customers are looking for, which images and profile pictures to use. We'll address Twitter versus LinkedIn, and we'll end on example of good profiles and example of bad profiles. And you'll see if you make any of those two lists. So if you're not aware of eCairn, eCairn is a tech startups uh, or actually a tech company in California. The company has launched a, a year ago an application called Find and Connect that discovers affluence in a target market to build new relationships to grow a book of business using AI and machine learning. Even though the application is mostly used by financial advisors, it is also available for any kind of um, industries and tribe that you're focusing on. So how AI works, it's simple. AI does two things. First, it predicts that someone is an affluent. It uses many criteria to tell the influence of uh, an individual and the level of affluency. And then the second thing that it does, it creates and aggregates their Twitter feed so you can uncover interesting tweets that a financial advisor or anyone using eCare should use to build relationship. A quick, um, a quick uh, uh, revisit of social selling and millennium generation. So the reason why we're focusing on the millennium generation is because as you all know this generation is particularly different from any previous generation and actually millenniums are three times more likely to select financial advisors from their online content now let me revisit the idea of social selling social selling is about leveraging social network to to do two things one, to find the right prospect. So there's a discovery step. And two, to build trusted relationship. Once you do those two things, then the outcome is to achieve sales goals. But as you can see, the achievement of the sales goals can only happen if the two steps are being um, done. Finding the right people, qualifying them, and then building that relationship. So today we're going to be talking about the first step, which is to have a profile that is engaging enough for people to actually want to do the first step, which is to be found. So let's look at what do people want, right, on social media. And let's um, look at some of the data points that are really interesting. What attracts and repels people from brands? So when we look at why people follow brands, we learn that 48% of those people who are following brands want to be entertained. So keep that in mind. They also want to be, to stay up, uh, up to date on company news, but really 36%, a big third of those people want to connect with other people who are similar to them. Same thing, a third or uh, looking to be inspired and educated. Now, why do people unfollow brands? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, more than half of the people unfollowing brands is because of poor customer service. But to me, what's really interesting is because it's half of them, it's because it's irrelevant content or just plainly too many ads or promotion, promotional posts. One day that it also stood out, stands out for me is that 34% of people who are unfollowing brands is because they talk about politics or social issues. We'll talk about that later. So keep those data in mind. Now, what are customers looking for in their providers? Three things, trust. Trust has become the new currency. And how do you build trust? In two ways. First, you need to create consistency of your personal branding, and we'll address that. So being consistent across social media, but also across who you are and the type of service that you're offering. And then 
relevant common point. What happens is once you, and I'm sure you can, you can connect to that. Once you find someone that you think is interesting, whether you need their service or not, what you're instinctively going to do is to find common points. And that's important because the information, the bio on Twitter that you're going to create needs to have some personal information. So I can find those common points, whether it's who do you know that I know? What schools have you been to that I may have, that I may share? So trust is really important and it also helps targeting because it brings focus. So should you be, I've, I've been asked, should you be the face of your company on Twitter? Absolutely. I know it's very uncomfortable for many to put yourself out there, but there's a lot of benefit to it. First of all, people create connection and you need to be able to um, create a personal relationship and your Twitter bio and profile needs to reflect this notion of personal connection. Also, you're what makes your business unique, especially as a financial advisor. You are what makes your business unique. You're different, right? Because from a finance, from a mutual fund, from an investment standpoint, you may have a, a strategy that is slightly different, but really the, the true uniqueness is going to be you. And finally, you can demonstrate your service best. So being, being the face of your company on Twitter is going to be key. Now let's address Twitter versus LinkedIn. We talked about creating trust, trust through consistency. And so having your profile on Twitter similar to the, your profile on LinkedIn is going to be key. I encourage you to use cross links if you don't have a separate website to actually share in your bio a link with your LinkedIn profile. So as you can see, well, the LinkedIn profile is very similar or actually uses features that are very similar to your Twitter profile. You have a professional picture, a cover photo, an optimized headline, which is the bio, and a teaser or summary. So make sure that whatever you have on LinkedIn is similar to what you have on Twitter. As you can see, Twitter will require you to have a professional picture, a cover photo, a link to blog or LinkedIn profiles, and then a bio with keywords and hashtag. It's important to have some hashtags in your bio. And the reason is people are using hashtag to find discussions, other people, experts. And so once, when, you, when they type and, and um, use those hashtags to search, you want to be found. Okay, let's tackle now the meat of this webinar. I'm going to review bad profiles and good profiles. So hopefully you can judge your own profile and make adjustments. These wonderful individual actually have a very bad profile. So let's first look at the handle. The handle is really important. The at needs to be easy to understand, straightforward and foundable. As you can see, you know, um, all those except maybe for Ian Fischler, although he has MS in it, these are really difficult to find. So let's say you go to a networking event, you give your name, and then, you know, whether you have your business card or not, um, the person wants to Google you or find you on Twitter or even connect to you on Twitter. They're gonna use their first name and last name. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Second of all, picture-wise, let's look at the picture. So Trish, you barely can see her. I think there's like a cow next to her. Not sure why, but that's not a good picture. Andre, uh, it's a little bit closer, but again, the hat, the glasses, I'm just not feeling. Um, who is this individual? Again, we're trying to create trust and you just have to display yourself as the best way you can. Nanette Kamian has a logo and that just doesn't create any personal relationship. Roberta, it has an interesting one. And the reason why I posted I post her is because, so she is CEO of Marina Financial and Wine 
fourth estate. So I don't know if it's a play, like a picture that represents her passion. She's actually riding horses. That's something she wants to talk about and share. In which case, I think it's great. If it's not one of her passion, then that's not a good picture. And then Ian Fischler, love the picture, very professional, but almost too corporate. And actually, when you look at his bio, there's nothing personal, right? And even there's a few mistakes. Please visit my website for additional information. That should be a link. It definitely should not be uh, using the very few characters that you have available on your bio. Now, in terms of description, right, the bio, um, all of those are not personal at all. There's no connection. There's nothing I can relate to. There's nothing common with me that could make me feel there might be a trust, right? Um, I would not recommend anyone to use any lingo. Um, you know, Trish talks about LPL, AIF, um, SIPC, I don't know about you, I do have a financial advisor myself, but that's not how we communicate. Um, and then Nanette has a beginning and a, a, I would say a better a bio because she seems to be a little bit focused. She, from the very beginning, talks about Gen X family. Oh, okay, so that might be me. Unfortunately, there is a mix, a mix of um, messages and I understand that some financial advisors or um, fee only um, you know monthly fee others or just taking um, fee on um, assets and sales uh, stock uh, and mutual funds which is fine but you don't want to talk money before we've even engaged you want to open the door and give people as many personal information that are relatable. So that's the bad profile. So really what not to do, use a poor profile image. Include a bio with technical and product description, not having a link or not having a bio at all. So I hope that was useful. Now let's look at good profile, okay. Ryan Iman, I would give Ryan a B plus. And if you look at um, this profile, which I like a lot, he has created a very unique persona, very distinctive. The picture is really interesting and you can see that there's a little bit of marketing to it, but in a good way and he's smiling. Uh, and I'm sure that his uh, character looks like him. He's also sharing a lot of personal information. He's a father of two. Um, he's a physician spouse, right? He's also very um, transparent, fee only. I like that. But it's not, met, it's not done the, the, the other way uh, like the other person that we just saw. He also shares about uh, where he comes from and that he's focused. He is a financial planner for physician. And I like it. It's focused. It's clear. Um, so he would get a B plus because if you look at his uh, LinkedIn profile, he actually doesn't have a LinkedIn profile, number one. His Twitter handle is not that easy. Physician wealth, what's the probability for me to actually Google or to type on Twitter physician wealth? It's pretty unlikely. So he's not easily found. He doesn't have a link. The link is missing, not good. As I mentioned, handled is a bit complicated and he doesn't have a LinkedIn profile. Caddy North, I really like her profile and her bio. She uh, not only focuses on who she wants to help, which or woman and entrepreneur, she's also inspiring. Dream big, embrace the financial freedom we all deserve. I like it. I am already starting to like her. Her picture, is very well done. She's smiling. It's not too corporate, but it's not too personal. She's also sharing, um, you know, transfer information. This is the company she works for, North Financial, and she shares where she graduated, the, the college she went to. So those are information that I can relate to. Now I'm giving her an A minus for the only reason that her background image, as you've noticed, there's way too much wide. 
And if you Google her or if you go on LinkedIn and find her name, you will find her. So she does have a LinkedIn profile, but it's not the same picture. It's not consistent. So A minus for her. Finally, um, I would give an A plus to Penny Oi. So Penny Oi has everything, a link, a great picture, the background. I like the black and white. Um, she already gives you other social media channels. She talks about the focus that she has and some personal information. Mom and wife. If I stumble upon her profile, I would definitely check out what is hashtag dream builder, what is hashtag WF. It's engaging. Now, you can tell that she's a speaker and therefore she has given a lot of thoughts about how to expand and how to create her personal brand. And this is really what we're talking about is in order for you to build a relationship with anyone on social media, you have to think about what's your persona, what's, what do you want to communicate that best represent who you are intimately and ultimately makes your difference. So what to do? make it relevant and meaningful have a professional image with a clear meaningful background a bio that has personal and unique traits and using hashtag to describe your uniqueness and finally doing some cross link with all those social media channels now once your profile is up updated and follows those elements you need to boost your Twitter profile. And you can start by having an initial followership using your own contact uh, and the people that you're, you have uh, their emails. On, twi on Twitter, if you go on account and setting, click on privacy, and then you can connect with people that you have been engaging on by email. And Twitter will take those people and um, let them know that you are on Twitter because I've seen a lot of financial advisors with, you know, following a thousand people, but being followed by 10 people. And there's a really important ratio to, again, create that trust.